Good morning and welcome to our fourth Sunday of Advent worship service, which of course is uh, not being done in person, but uh, you can watch and view it online. Uh, we would encourage you, uh, since Christmas Eve will be the same, we want to encourage you to uh, participate fully. Many of you know the carols uh, by heart, so you sing at home. Uh, you don't have to worry about the social distancing and the masking. And also, um, you might want to have uh, some communion elements handy, like some bread uh, and a wafer, or a wafer uh, and some grape juice or wine, and we'll be doing communion and at that appropriate time. We ask you to participate with us. Along with that, we also would invite you to uh, have a candle ready so that when we do the candle lighting at the end, you can light a candle as well. So even though you can't be here physically, uh, you can be with us spiritually as we celebrate the birth of Christ. I think that takes care of our announcements for this morning. Let us share in the confession. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess, we confess that we are held captive by sin. sin. In spite of our best efforts, efforts we have we gone long astray. astray. We, we have, have not welcomed the stranger. stranger. We, we have, have not loved our neighbor. neighbor. We have, we have not, not been Christ to one another. Restore, Restore us, O oh God. Wake, wake us, us up and turn us from our sin. sin. We must each day in the light of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. And you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's presence, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn in the bleak midwinter.
and also and with, you. with you. In peace, let us pray to the Your house and your kingdom 
shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. At this time, we will light the Advent wreath for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Blessed are you, God of hosts, for you promised to send a son, Emmanuel, who brought your presence among us, and you promised through your son, Jesus, to save us from our sin. The fourth candle represents peace and is called the angel's candle. The angels announced that Jesus came to bring peace. He came to bring people close to God and to each other again. This color is also purple to represent the culmination of love through the Messiah. As we light these candles, turn again to us in mercy. Strengthen our faith in the words spoken by your prophets. Restore us and give us life that we may be saved. O house of David, come. Let us rejoice for the Son of God, God, Emmanuel, comes comes to be with us. Amen. Amen. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph to the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears to Abraham and his children forever. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Back in the spring, around the time of Easter, before I came to this church, uh, to fill in from time to time. I remember saying to my congregation, uh, where I serve as adjunct pastor, back in Jim Thorpe, can you imagine if this were Christmas, and instead of Easter, we had to celebrate Christmas with the pandemic going on? I'm so glad that uh, that's not the case. <laughs> well, we don't have to imagine, do we? Uh, here we are, not being able to be together in person to worship, although, thank God, we are where we are because, uh, what, 10, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have had this capability that we have now to, to do what we're doing, uh, recording services and posting them. And of course, uh, Christmas Eve will be the same way which will be very difficult because many of you, like me, have maybe never missed a Christmas Eve. I think I missed one right after I retired. Uh, but, uh, you know, most of us find ourselves in church somewhere on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, too, will have its limitations, but hopefully you'll join us, uh, if not in person, at least over the internet. Uh, but Christmas, in this time is difficult. The reason I said it would be, can you imagine it? Because, you know, we can't do what we normally do. Uh, I know you had a little mini concert here a couple weeks ago, but normally churches have concerts. Uh, Bob and I would have been involved with the chorale. Uh, last weekend, we would have been tied up Saturday and Sunday doing concerts, and the weekend before that, that Saturday, and that's not happening. Uh, restaurants are closed. Uh, shopping is very limited. Amazon, UPS, 
FedEx trucks are kept very busy, they're everywhere. Um, it, it, you know, we can do the usual Christmas card thing, and many of you are at home baking, and you, you are wrapping presents and so on, but then there's a question of whether or not you'll even be with family members, especially if they have to travel a distance, and how many can you be with, etc. cetera. Um, we're all struggling. I, I find myself spending a lot of psychic energy trying to decide how can we do this, or can we do it, or should we not do it, and so on. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, and that's not to mention at all the, the bigger challenge is that people are dying. I mean, every, as we're speaking, people are dying of this disease. Uh, and it's gotten worse instead of better now. The good news is the vaccine is here and coming, and some more is coming, and we're, eventually many of us are going to get it. In the meantime, we can just hope that we can hang in there. So, it's, it is, we don't have to imagine what COVID's like, because it's here. And we're dealing with it, and we're not alone, because the message of Christmas is Emmanuel. God is with us. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Did you know that this Christmas coming up is actually, as near as we can tell, the 2024th birthday of our Lord? Uh, due to an error in the calculation of the calendar, it's now generally recognized that Jesus, Jesus was probably born in the year 4 BC. I say probably, it's not certain, but probably. And so, adding that uh, to the 2020, uh, we get 2024. But, you know, we're more sure of the year than we are of the day. Uh, when it comes to Christmas being on the 25th, uh, Probably not. <laughs> Even first of all, if you've always thought that's the way it was, um, it was established as the 25th. And by the way, Christmas, even though it celebrates the birth of Jesus, wasn't the first thing to be celebrated. Of course, it was Easter and Epiphany, and then later Christmas. But Christmas was established on the 25th by uh, the time of the Emperor Constantine in uh, 336. Uh, that was the year that it was made the 25th and set that way. So it's been that way a long time. Of course, it's January 6th for Eastern Orthodox folks, but or Russian Orthodox, but that's the way it is for most of us. And um, the reason it was the 25th, supposedly, is because it was very near the uh, winter solstice and the pagan uh, celebration of Saturnalia, um, the Feast of Light, and so on. So, Supposedly it was done that way to kind of get rid of that or take it over uh, so that this would become the more dominant thing. And of course, as we all know, when it comes to the celebration of Christmas, there's all kinds of pagan and otherwise, <laughs> uh, you know, things involved with Christmas so that it, it, it's hardly a pure thing, uh, though we intend it to be. Well, far more important than the when of Jesus' birth is the how. And that's a lot more difficult to answer. When Mary was confronted by the angel Gabriel with the message in her gospel that she had found favor with God and would conceive in her womb and bear a son and she called him Jesus, she asked, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? And the answer that she got from the angel probably wasn't all that helpful. It really didn't say, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. How in the world, how was this really going to take place? How was it possible? In fact, it seems impossible, as so many things do, but then she was told by the angel Gabriel, nothing is impossible with God. We know the Christmas story, <clears throat> we know the details, we know what happened, that Mary did conceive and bear a son, gave birth to him and laid him in a manger in Bethlehem, that his name was Jesus and that he is the Savior of the world. But how does something like that take place?
place. God only knows how. There is much in life we don't understand. You know, um, I'm sure there's a biological explanation for it. I tried to find it on the internet and Googled it and I didn't get it. But real Christmas trees, you know, when they're cut, uh, you have to put them in water, as is the case with our tree over here. And it's very important that you keep the water in it so that the needles don't dry out. How does that water get up into a dead tree? I mean, that's, you know, it's one thing if a tree has roots and water gets into the roots, and, but how does water get into a dead tree? I'm sure there's a scientific answer, but I don't know what it is. And then there's the how of homing pigeons. Uh, how does a bird know how, where to fly and how to come back with a message? Um, or the, the spider webs, the intricate design, how do they know how to do that? And what about the how of biochemical origins of life? The lab can only go so far. You can collect as many seawater samples as you want, but none will contain or tell us anything about the tide. As much as we know, we really know all the how of it, or do we? Only God knows how. What Isaac Newton wrote in the early 18th century, I think, is as true then as it is now in the early 21st century. He said, what we know is a drop, but what we don't know is an ocean. And I think that's still true. Albert Einstein, who knew the how of physics, perhaps more than any other person, said, as we acquire more knowledge, things do not become more comprehensible, but more mysterious. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. And that's what Christmas is all about. Mystery. That's what the birth of a child to a humble virgin is about. Mystery. Several years ago, when I was Prior to my retirement, my last church in Ivy Land in Bucks County, I uh, had the privilege of hearing someone by the name of Diogenes Allen, who sounds like a philosopher, and in fact he was a professor at Princeton Theological Seminary with a name like that, he had to be. Um, he actually lived not far from where I was in Bucks County, nearby Newtown, I believe, uh, and died in uh, 2013. Well, several years ago, he, he made a useful distinction between a problem and a mystery. He said, a problem is something to be solved, to be dealt with, to be disposed of and put away, like a canceled check. But a mystery, he said, is different. We do not solve mysteries. We enter into them. The deeper we enter into them, the more illumination we get. Still greater depths are revealed to us the further in we go. In contrast, when the problem is solved, it's over and done with, and we go on to the next problem. But a mystery, ah, that's different. Once recognized, it's something with which we are never finished, and that's certainly true of Christmas. Indeed, we return to it again and again every year, and it unfolds new meanings to us. During World War II, there was a doctor who uh, had a mysterious talent for naming the place where a soldier was from on the basis of his physical exam. As one ex-soldier remembered it, I once saw more than 100 inductees stripped to the waist and lined up outside the dispensary waiting for their physicals. One by one, they were ushered into the doctor's presence after making a routine examination, he would say, that's all, soldier. Say, by the way, you're from Kansas, aren't you? Or New Hampshire, or Texas. Amazingly, he was correct every time, even though he had never seen or met these men before. How did he know? Years later, when the doctor was in civilian practice, he revealed his secret. How did I do it, you ask him? Was it by listening to the men's accents? Some people can tell where you're from by that. No, he said it was by listening to their hearts. 
You see, when I put the stethoscope to a soldier's chest, I simply read the address on the dog tags hanging from it. <laughs> well, so much for that mystery, right? Sometimes the how of mystery can be that simple once it's revealed, but perhaps maybe not in life. And maybe some of the deeper mysteries, the ones we struggle with or concerned about, like why this pandemic and why is it so difficult, etc. Maybe the answers to those mysteries will someday ask our Lord and maybe, maybe we'll find the answers to our questions face to face with our Lord. And again, maybe it won't really matter. Dorothy Sayers, one of the most skillful writers of mystery stories, changed from writing about crime to writing about religion and theology. She had quite a reaction when her first book on religion was published. Her wide circle of readers rushed to the bookstore to get the latest Dorothy Sayers, and some of them, when they did not discover a corpse on the library floor, wanted their money back. They did not deserve any money back, for they still had a mystery story on their hands. For in turning from detective stories to religion, Dorothy Sayers went from the little mysteries to the big ones. The little mysteries of life are not easily solved. The mystery of good and evil, the mystery of how God created this world and why he created it, the mystery of his choosing a virgin named Mary, who conceived and bore a son, who became God with us, Emmanuel. Hard to explain by mere words. The Virgin Mary did not understand how, but she believed, she accepted the message from God and the angel, and her response was, here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to the word. Because Mary was willing to work with God, to allow God to work in and through her, the greatest mystery ever, the greatest event ever took place. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Across the centuries, many men have tried to become God, but only once did God try to become a man. This is not just a Christmas doctrine for a once a year event. It is a central truth of Christianity. Incarnation, God becoming flesh. What a mystery. Max Licato, as quoted in the book of Jesus that he wrote, has a way of making the Incarnation seem more real, more down to earth. Listen to how he describes Mary. She looks into the face of the baby, her son, her Lord, her, his majesty. At that point in history, the human being who best understands who God is and what he is doing is a teenage girl in a smelly stable. She can't take her eyes off him. Somehow Mary knows she is holding God. So this is he. She remembers the words of the angel, his kingdom will never end. He looks like anything but a king. His face is prunish and red. His cry, though strong and healthy, is still the helpless and piercing cry of a baby. And he is absolutely dependent upon Mary for his well-being. Majesty in the midst of the mundane. Holiness in the filth of sheep manure and sweat, divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable, through the womb of a teenager, and in the presence of a carpenter. Max also says about the Incarnation and, and helps to make it real when he has these 25 questions for Mary. Listen to them. What was it like? Watching him pray, he asked of Mary. How did he respond when he saw other kids giggling during the service in the synagogue? When he saw a rainbow, did he ever mention a flood? Did you ever feel awkward teaching him how he created the world? When he saw a lamb being led to the slaughter, did he act differently? Did you ever see him with a distant look on his face as if he were listening to someone you couldn't hear? How did he act at funerals? 
Did the thought ever occur to you that the God to whom you were praying was asleep under your own roof? Did you ever try to count the stars with him and succeed? Did he ever come home with a black eye? How did he act when he got his first haircut? Did he have any friends by the name of Judas? Did he do well in school? Did you ever scold him? Did he ever have to ask a question about scripture? What do you think he thought when he saw a prostitute offering to the highest bidder the body he made? Did he ever get angry when someone was dishonest with him? Did you ever catch him pensively looking at the flesh on his own arm while holding a clod of dirt? Did he ever wake up afraid? Who was his best friend? When someone referred to Satan, how did he act? Did you ever accidentally call him father? What did he and his cousin John talk about as kids? Did his other brothers and sisters understand what was happening? Did you ever think, that's God eating my soup? I don't know how the Word became flesh, how incarnation happened, but it did. God only knows how. But imagine what could be accomplished if we were allowed, if we allowed God to work in and through us. If we, like Mary, were to say to God, here am I, let it be with me according to your Word. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his heaven. This Christmas, experience the mystery. And even if you don't know how God works, let God work in and through you. I want to close by reading the words of an anthem that we sang in the chorale last year or the year before. Many of you know it. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kissed your little baby? Then you kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect Lamb? This sleeping child you're holding is the great the great I am. Amen. Our hymn of the day is the Magnificat, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness.
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, great. is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors and need us. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially those in our prayer list, and especially those who are suffering from COVID-19. Be with the doctors and nurses as they treat them. Be with their families. We're grateful, Lord, for the vaccine and the vaccines that are becoming available, and pray that eventually we will conquer this disease and make it through it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, Guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Joy to the World. <laughs>
thanks be to God.